Great work is driven by passion, which accelerates innovation and growth of companies. We really believe that innovation is at the heart of everything that uh, we are doing. We are bringing together a new breed of sustainable innovators and this will actually create an ecosystem of industry leading partners. And that's what really wakes me up every day. I really believe that the backbone to the next generation of sustainable cities is about empowering people and empowering people at all levels. The current system for urban planning is essentially a top-down system um, that are usually initiated from um, the perspective of central decision makers and they tend to neglect the people at the bottom and it's them who have the best knowledge of the needs as well as the demands of the local areas. This kind of top-down system uh, does actually very little to encourage uh, community involvement or even ownership of proposals. And I think that this top-down uh, approach is also a waste of resources. Uh, because there's a lack of understanding of what's really happening on the ground. As obviously each community will most likely have different needs. So here's a question. What if we could flip this model? And what if we could empower people from the bottom? So if cities were to focus on investing in young companies, companies that offered, let's say, innovative products or even innovative services and in various sectors. Sectors such as health, water, agriculture or renewable energy. These are really the, the biggest, let's say, sectors that will have a huge impact on the next generation of sustainable cities. Not only will they be nurturing, let's say, entrepreneurial spirit from the bottom up, um, this kind of inward investment will actually create more green jobs, right? And will most likely result in a new way of thinking about cities. The next generation of sustainable cities, I believe, is about empowering cities. And empowering cities are, let's say, entrepreneurial cities that foster a bottom-up culture where innovators could help transform our cities into more sustainable environments. Uh, there's a story uh, of uh, this inventor, uh, which I really like. He was the inventor of the bicycle sharing program. Actually, the earliest bike sharing program was started by this Dutch socialist back in 1965. And his white bicycle plan in Amsterdam, which is what it was called, he put that to a test by simply collecting, let's say, several hundreds of bikes he painted them all white and he distributed them around the city for anyone to use freely. And since 1965, obviously the advancements in technology and design have allowed bike sharing programs to become much more secure and more reliable and also more accessible. No one could have really thought that 50 years ago, an experiment by just one guy, more than 700 cities worldwide would go on to provide a bike sharing program. So I really like this idea of um, empowering people to innovate and to look at ways to um, make our cities more livable. So entrepreneurial cities provide a great platform, let's say a great environment for innovators to deal with the challenges in which our cities need to address, not just for the next few years, but I'm talking about next 30 to 50 years. And this really requires a more advanced as well as more holistic approach to sustainable development. And it's not just thinking at the mega scale, right? So here we're thinking at even a micro scale. This is very important when it comes to designing sustainable cities. 
there are many opportunities to involve local communities. Even opportunities to involve young architects in various aspects of sustainability, including waste. Let's take an example like construction waste. The construction waste during a project can actually be used and upcycled to create very unique street furniture as well as art. So developments that have a zero waste art strategy, which encourages and engages, let's say, local artists and designers to develop such unique street furniture as well as art should be really the backbone of the public realms of such developments. Today, there are many young architects who would like to be part of our projects and as well as our journey. So the best advice I can give to the next generation of architects as well as designers is to always stay hungry, right? To always push yourself from this very young age uh, to be at your greatest. I always say to people, build your character as an architect. I think this is the one key things that is missing. Because anybody can learn a skill, but your character is actually what will get you hired. But most importantly, I think you should have fun.